I was using Ruby, like you have an array, map, slice, something, something. And then coming to go, how do you write a for loop? And you're like feeling like <laughs> you're that dumb, <laughs> dumbass little first year college student who's like, how do you write a for loop? Hello and welcome guys, my name is Steve and welcome to my channel. If you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. And today I invited another guest. And as you guessed, we're doing a Q&A over coffee where we drink some coffee and we talk about something. And today we talk about the road uh, from Ruby to Go. So Vlad here, he's a Go developer. He's in the same team as I am. We're doing, uh, or I should say, we're working on the same project at the company and uh, he, his transition to Go was actually from Ruby, so if there are any Rubyists out there, uh, make sure to watch this video because this might be a useful experience for you. So if you are benefiting or you think you're getting some value from this video, make sure to like and share this video and keep watching. Okay, so before we begin this episode, first of all, Vlad, uh, I'd like you to introduce yourself, to tell us something about yourself and why do you think you deserve to be on this episode and uh, what's the value that you're bringing on the table? Well, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, as Stefan said, Vlad's my name. Uh, I've been doing being a Go developer for two years now. Before that, I was a uh, Ruby, Ruby and Rails, stuff like that developer. Uh, for five years, I've been doing mostly Ruby, working strictly on that, doing web stuff. And uh, that was my road. Why am I here? Well, I guess I got a very personal invitation. <laughs> <laughs> now that you know Vlad, he's gonna be with us for a while in this episode and uh, I'd like to begin this uh, this topic with a specific question and uh, specifically I want to ask Vlad uh, why exactly uh, or what exactly made him make the switch? Why uh, did you make the switch from Ruby to Go? Well, I mean, let's say the basics was because I wanted to leave the company. But the uh, underlying Sounds thing... Sounds like a good reason. <laughs> yeah, like main thing. But the underlying thing, it was actually a challenge for me. I was kind of in the moment where I was a bit sick of Ruby mm -hmm. because, uh, well, the language is too much narrow in its, uh, what do you do with it? Mostly it's web development because there's Rails and there's Ruby. I Two personally made the switch to go from JavaScript so I could say the same thing like, I was already sick of the ecosystem of the company as well. So I was like, they have an open yeah. position and uh, nobody's hiring Let's Go, so I should get this Let's chance. Yeah, 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 exactly. The same thing. Like Go, new language, let's try. Sounds like a challenge actually. Yeah. So yeah, uh, when I was writing Ruby, I was always like, no, why do you need those static languages? That's not comfortable. Come on, you have Ruby, you have everything is everything. Like, Same blah, thing blah, blah, in blah. JavaScript. You, yeah. you write everything dynamically and then yeah. the and, and bugs you're like, happen. You're like, dynamic is the thing. You see all the bugs, all the stuff that's happening behind. Yeah. You see the problems, but no, dynamic is the yeah. thing. Yeah, and you're like, you stupid, you're supposed yeah. to know the gotchas. <laughs> exactly. You don't know enough gotchas to write in this language. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but then, go game. Okay, so the next question I want to ask Vlad is name five uh, difficulties or impediments when you made the transition, when you made the switch to go. Like, what are the top five things that you, th you thought, like, these things are weird or wow. I, I can't just switch because of these things? Like, Well, first thing, of course, is that when you're writing Ruby, you're, um, you know that everything in Ruby is a class. Everything in Ruby is an object. You're like just this OP mind. Everything's an object. Everything relates polymorphism, all that stuff, solid principles. Yeah, you're into it. And then you come to go and have you ever heard about a class? No. What exactly is a class? What's a class and go? Define an object. Yeah, define an object. And you're like, uh, um, but how do you actually program without objects? Like there was this small little moment when I was like, how do you actually program without objects and classes? No. And then the gears start rotating and you're like, oh, so I'm back to C, okay. And then I start remembering what happened in the university when we were learning C. And we, you realize that with experience. First off, when you take a look at the language, you're like, this language is not for me, you know? And then when you start yeah. Playing with it, you realize it's actually pretty fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it gets better when you are trying it. Okay, so first thing is, it looks primitive. It's primitive, yeah. It's not OOP that I, I was used to. 
Second thing, like, there was an actual thing. I actually forgot how do you write for loops. That was like, <laughs> I was like, really? Come on, come on, mind, brain, Yeah, please. the for loop was a thing. Like, you write everything with the for. There's no while, do while, yeah, all yeah. that crap, for, uh, in, and all the yeah. things for each, which you're used to. I was using Ruby, like, you have an array, map, slice, something, something. And then coming to go, how do you write a for loop? And you're like feeling like you're that dumbass dumb little first year college student who's like, how do you write a for loop? I, I felt like so really dumb that moment. It was really... Oh, uh. One more thing that I remember right now that from the top of my head is um, there are no frameworks. There are actually no, you, I mean, maybe there are, but they're not that Yeah, but famous. in Ruby, in Ruby you only got one thing. Yeah, exactly, you got only Your Rails. Guys, there's just this thing, it's called Rails. Yeah. You don't have well, any other options, you know? Okay, there is Middleman, there is uh, Sinatra, there are several, but come on, Ruby, when you say Ruby, it's Rails. It's not <laughs> all of those things. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you're used to Rails, you're used to, there are the controllers, there are the modals, there's the database uh, layer. I mean, everybody's used to this specific structure. Exactly. Yeah. MVC, like typical, you have model, view, controller, everything that works. Well, welcome to Go. You don't have the structure, you have to invent it. And you're like, uh, and I mostly were feeling like, okay, I'm going to build Give me some, rails some patterns to follow, right? Yeah, some patterns, give me something. Because even if like, I'm feeling that I'm building rails from scratch. Yeah. That's, uh, Okay, so the next question I want to ask Vlad, and I want his honest opinion, is where is Ruby more suitable to use uh, than Go? Like, where would you use Ruby oh. rather than using Go? Oh, oh, oh. Well, like, first thing is a complex... Uh, I would say Rails would be much more useful in a very complex web page. When you have a page, a single uh, page app, you have us on front end, you have the back end. Would you, wouldn't you rather use a, uh, if we're talking REST API, for example, would you, wouldn't you rather use a uh, Go REST API and uh, a React uh, app, like simple, single page app, or even Angular or anything that well, yeah, provides? If, if we're talking about simple, yes. If we're talking about like a higher complexity, then I would actually rather use something Ruby. which is bootstrapped, like not necessarily out of the box, or bootstrapped, what do you mean? like something that has a very deep complexity. Like imagine you have a an app. Let's say we're talking about like mm, Amazon, yeah. but think that Amazon is handled by a single server. Yeah, like you have those controllers, lots. You mean lots a of them. monolith or something? Kind of monolith. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like. If we're talking about a monolithic structure, something that will grow and you will, you, you're not thinking microservices right now, you're just yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. one project. Well, that would be a, for me, it would be a Rails job more than Go. Another question I want to ask Vlad is, uh, what are the things you think you uh, are missing from Ruby and what are the things you think Go doesn't have and you wish it had? Uh, remember when I started, I just started learning Go, well, okay, let's say I learned the language, yeah, I yeah, know yeah. how the syntax is, I know the, how it's being written, but I was put in the context like, here we are doing the web service. Yeah. And I was actually pretty much used to the Rails um, project structure. Yeah. Like I was used, okay, we ha I have a folder controllers, I know their controllers are no what they are responsible for. Yeah. I have modals, same thing. In Go, in Go, you name those things. Yeah. You make them as you wish they would look like. Yeah. And I was like thinking, okay, if you have is that controllers, right? Is that not yeah, right? Is, <laughs> is this how you're supposed to do? Is that how you're supposed I to even do? Remember, I even remember debates like, uh, I read this specific article yeah, and this yeah. guy is very talented. He's very respected in the community and he says you should do it this way. Yeah. <laughs> and there are a lot of debates like that. Like, and you're like learning some Bibles and stuff. And then, yeah, Ruby is powered on magic. Yeah. It just, everything you do, magically, it yeah. works itself. Like when you're a beginner, the magic kind of comes into your advantage. But, yeah. but when then you, when you start to, to like deal with bigger problems and bugs, you actually start to hate the magic and you like straightforward, stupid code, which doesn't do anything but the thing you're telling it to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you miss the magic or you're saying, you know, like, I don't miss it. Like, it's right, so, much better when you see things clear. Yeah, like you don't like it in the beginning because you're used to getting things done for you. Yeah. 
But and then, then, yeah, you realize it's actually better for you. Yeah. Well, but Rails is so heavy. Like, I was uh, once trying to go, uh, I was doing a flame graph depending on, like, I had a big JSON realization from yeah, yeah. database to actual JSON. I was doing a flame graph watching how many classes it passes. I was shocked. <laughs> I was so shocked how many classes it goes through in order did, to do Did you something. even count the ones that are built in? <laughs> no. On each layer, on each class you pass, there may be something bad happening. You may do something that can change the behavior. Because polymorphism, because you can change the method on a parent. Yeah. And you don't know all the classes you have. I mean, you, you can know them, but... You don't. <laughs> All right, so speaking of that, you already got like two years since you're writing Go. So my question is, uh, uh, how do you look at Go uh, now, like after two years? Like what's what, what has changed after two years? Well, you know, like I had around uh, maybe a year ago, uh, one of our colleagues asked me to review some Ruby code yeah. for chef roles and stuff. <laughs> I understood that I basically forgot the language. <laughs> I basically forgot Ruby. I was like, Wow, this is some other language, but which I was writing for five years now. I was like in the same uh, situation. Uh, sometimes I uh, I do open up the console in the browser and start writing some JavaScript, oh, yeah. and I was like, and I start to declare variables and stuff, and I I start giving them types. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah What's yeah, wrong yeah. with my brain? Like types. <laughs> so after two years, uh, can you say confidently that uh, you uh, you're comfortable with the language and you are. Uh, Happy with the language, I would say. Yeah, I mean, pretty much I feel that I'm comfortable. Because I feel that about myself, at least. I don't know about others, so uh, it's interesting for us to know, uh, like, after this transition from Ruby to Go, do you regret the choice or no. you think it's, like, it, it was a good choice? It was first month that I was struggling if this was a good or, or a bad decision. But after that, like after switching from a dynamic type to a static type, like this was the point where I understood why is uh, strictly type languages, why, are they, why they are so good. Yeah, I, I always didn't get, uh, why are these people making fun of us? Yeah. We're writing dynamic languages, they're cool languages, you can yeah, do so many yeah, things yeah. with that. And they're like, hey, you guys go play in your playground, you yeah. know? <laughs> I mean, you have to try it. Yeah. In order to understand, you have to try. Because me, as a, a past me that was a Rubyist, I was writing OP all the way, I I would never think that a static type language will be that good. Okay, so one last question I would love uh, Vlad to answer us. If there are Rubyists watching us, they would probably want to know some specific steps uh, they would want to take if they want to pick up Go. So what are the steps that you recommend taking uh, for Rubyists? that want to switch to Go? Well, if you're thinking generally of switching to Go, uh, like first thing I would recommend is uh, finishing the Go tour. It's pretty good uh, overview of the language. It's so simple to use, actually. You have everything in your browser. Yeah, you just go into your browser, finish the Go tour, and basically by the end of the Go tour, you know the language. You know everything the language permits you to do. You just have to now realize how would you use it. Next things is, uh, I remember I was um, trying to convert my knowledges of uh, writing programming in Ruby to programming in Go. Yeah. And a um, pretty neat thing I found myself doing is I was trying to translate the solid principles from OP into Go. Go is not an object-oriented language. You will not have objects, you will not have classes. You still have structs and packages. And you can somehow in your mind, you can transform them into the OOP principles. Like having the yeah, single they kind responsibility. of start to make sense when you uh, when you treat them like, like when you start seeing them like that, because Go doesn't necessarily put a label on this. This is a class, Yeah, you know? Go just has structs and functions. And then you just kind of uh, combine them. You just the jungle them. Yeah. <laughs> I know other go. people. I know other people like uh, they do the go tour, and then uh, they uh, take one of their existing projects, a Ruby project in this case, and they try uh, by having that minimum knowledge in Go, they try to convert the project somehow. Yeah. Of course, there are projects which are too complex, like they have databases and they have lots of things over there happening, and that might be complicated to translate. But uh, yeah, I uh, I agree. If you are trying to do that, 
do not go into too many details because Rails has a lot of stuff written for you, <laughs> which, do, which Go doesn't have. Like I remember right now that uh, for Rails applications, if you want to do uh, the um, CSRF protection, then in, it's done in one line in controller. You just add one line in controller and the controller does it for you. Yeah. For Go, that's another pain. That's a very big yeah, pain. Yeah, at first I was like, why does Go not have an HTTP session? Why is it so yep. complicated yep. not to have an HTTP yep. session? Yeah, I mean, and then really, I just the and then you start asking yourself like, what's an what's an HTTP session? Is it a file session? Is it yeah. a distributed session? Yeah. And then you realize that there are things which are at your discretion. You have to do it yourself. Speaking of sessions, uh, when you transfer to go, know your protocol, know the HTTP. You have to know it in order to make the better position. Because when you're doing uh, Rails. You don't necessarily need that because Rails has it for you. It already has all the methods you need. You, it knows where to extract the headers, how to get them, which headers you need, which you don't need, what's a session, stuff like that. Go doesn't have that out of the box. I remember when I uh, when I transitioned to Go, I never actually got into the bare bones of an HTTP server. Yeah, yeah. Because I was playing with it in Node.js and PHP, and they kind of had that already, either by a framework or by something like that. Yeah. And I was like, when I first started to write my own TCP server, which accepts connections, which parses HTTP headers uh, via the HTTP protocol, I was like, goodness, this is, I mean, I was missing a lot of things yeah. because I was just not aware they exist. If we're talking about WebSockets, which we have in like now chats, Twitch, yeah, uh, yeah. YouTube, many things are working, working with the WebSockets, which like, this is a thing that's, now it's used many times. In Rails, what you do, this is just a simple uh, request, and you say that this is gonna talk with WebSockets, Rails does it for you. While you don't know what's happening behind that. Rails doesn't show it, it just tells you that it happens. <laughs> and when I was writing something like this in Go, well, I found Hub, out- Ah, connections. Yeah, I found store, out that You stuff. need to manually store Yeah, you have to manually store. That. This is the first time I got uh, 105, I guess, or 103 HTTP response. Yeah, and you start, I never use those. You start never. Learning, you start learning the statuses, the yeah. the verbs, and all that stuff. Like it's interesting. If we highlight like top three things uh, that you would recommend for uh, Ruby developers, what would those be? Like in a nutshell. Go tour. Yeah. HTTP. HTTP. And. Uh, trying to transpose, uh, trying to write the same thing you wrote in Rails, but do not get stuck into a language. Like think broad, think abstractly. Yeah, try to think about the concept and not the way it's implemented in Ruby. Yeah, start with a simple CRUD. A simple CRUD is more than enough in order to understand how does uh, Go work with uh, yeah, like in CRUD, regards to web. A CRUD would probably uh, walk you through all the steps and you have an idea, a picture of, whether or not you would like to switch to Go. All right, guys, so that was pretty much it about this episode, the Vlad's experience about switching from Ruby to Go. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it on this one. Make sure to follow him. I'll link everything in the description of this video. And yeah, that was pretty much it on this episode. I'll see you guys in the next video, or I should say, I'll see you next month, where we talk about a different topic with somebody else. Peace. All right, guys, so that was pretty much it on this video. With me was Vlad, who was a Ruby's developer, and now Ruby's developer. Ruby's developer. <laughs> <laughs> and that was... Uh, <laughs> you shut up, stop laughing. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah.